Good evening, and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, June 3rd. We're coming at you from my home studio this evening out of respect for the uh, curfews in place in the city of Chicago. The order of service is found right on the screen, so simply follow along as you end your day with God. Let us begin. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. For you led your people Israel on a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 54. Please chant with me. O God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness put an end to them. With a freewill offering I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, God is my helper, the Lord is the upholder of my life. This evening's hymn is Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord. Please sing with me. Draw near and take the body of the Lord, and drink the holy blood for you outpoured, saved by his body and his holy blood. With souls refreshed we give our thanks to God. Christ our Redeemer, God's eternal Son, has by his cross and blood the victory won. He gave his life for greatest and for least, himself the victim and himself the priest. Let us approach with faithful hearts sincere, and take the pledges of salvation here. Christ, who in this life all the saints' defense, gives all believers life that never ends. With heavenly bread he makes the hungry whole, gives living waters to the thirsting soul. Lord of the nations, to whom all must bow, in this great feast of love be with us now. This evening's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 26. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, 
Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed him, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him, to one another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, uh, we've been going over these past three weeks now. This is the fourth week of our series on the Lord's Supper. So the first series we talked about it being, first week we talked about it being the foretaste of the great heavenly banquet to come. The second week we talked about Passover. The third we talked about manna in the wilderness. And now this week we actually go with Jesus to that Passover table where he prepared to celebrate his last supper. And we know, we can see right off the bat in this reading that he was celebrating the Passover. He was in that long line, that long tradition of people celebrating their freedom from bondage in Egypt as he went and celebrated this uh, memorial feast. And as Jesus has done so often, he always makes the old new. He makes the ordinary extraordinary. And that is what he was doing this night. He celebrated the Passover in the usual manner, but as he celebrated it, he and the other disciples knew that there was something going on, that things just didn't seem right. Because in that moment, in that night, they knew that the walls were starting to, they were starting to come around and crush around Jesus. He had given a long discourse that night about how he was leaving his disciples. And so the, the tension was there. You could cut it with a knife. And then he speaks about he, how he was to be betrayed. And so the disciples, they, they were thinking, well, I love this man. He is my Lord. He is my teacher. He is my Savior. I would never betray him. So one by one, they go around the table asking, is it, is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? And Judas asks the same thing. He knows that he is to betray his Lord. Maybe he's just trying to keep up appearances. And he asks, is it I, Lord? And I love the way that the King James Version renders it. And Jesus simply says to him, thou sayest, you say so. But they go around that room and there is feelings of betrayal and fear and uncertainty in that moment. But then Jesus does something even to transform that as they share one more unique meal together. In the Gospel of John, Jesus talks again about how he was leaving his disciples and about how he would be with them always. And so in this moment, Jesus takes some bread, he blesses it, and he breaks it. He gives it to the disciples and says, Take, eat, this is my body. Was Jesus speaking literally here or figuratively here? Well, the Greek, the language there, we can say that the word is means is. When Jesus said, this is my body, he was saying, this here, this bread has become my body. It's a way that we don't understand, that we can't explain, but that we hold to and that we believe. That bread was Jesus' body in that moment. So what does it mean? 
in that case. Jesus had spoken, again in the Gospel of John, that he would be leaving his disciples, but he does this and he says this in knowing that he gives his disciples a way that he would be with them, even after he was gone. This is my body. This do in remembrance of me. We read that in St. Paul, which we'll be talking about next week. He took a cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is very much along that line that Jesus is preparing his disciples for the fact that he would be leaving them, not only in death, but also after his ascension. But he says that he would not drink. He would not partake of that fruit of the vine, which he says is his blood, his body, his blood, given for us, shed for us. Again, we say that is means is. We have no reason to doubt what Jesus says here. This is Christ's blood, shed for me, shed for you, that we partake of as we draw near and take that body of our Lord. It's one of the ways that God is with us. That word, that ancient Hebrew word, Emmanuel, God with us, still holds true this day. For the Holy Spirit dwells with us, and Jesus Christ even dwells with us as we receive him in the blessed sacrament of the altar. And it's been tough to take communion during this time, but church has started up again. And you can always come and just give a call and uh, set up a time for private communion. Because when we do that, when we, if we truly believe what Jesus says, if we truly believe that is means is, that means that Christ dwells with us bodily. That means that Christ dwells with us in his blood. And that we can go in peace, knowing that we do not go alone. Because Christ has kept his promise to never leave us, to never abandon us, and to be with us always. And so, verse 30, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And you know what happens at that point. Jesus goes to pray. He brings the disciples with them, and they fall asleep. He wakes them up several times as they were going around that table. It wasn't just Judas who betrayed Jesus that night. It was all the other disciples who did not journey with him even to the cross. But just because all of his disciples, even we, in our sin have betrayed Jesus, doesn't mean that he still doesn't see fit to come to us and to be with us and to abide with us. Jesus still does that and always does that in that blessed sacrament of the altar. He had his moment in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went down he was arrested, he was put on a show trial, and he was executed, sentenced to death on the cross. And yet, what we receive in that sacramental meal of Holy Communion, we receive everything that Jesus did for us. When he said, this is my body, this is my blood, we partake personally, bodily, of that sacrifice that he made for us on that cross. And so, that's just one of the many ways that we can know that we can be sure of what Jesus did for us because he is still doing it for us this day, still saving us this day, still coming to us this day. And what do we do? We simply draw near and take the body of our Lord and drink this holy blood for you outpoured. Saved by his body and his holy blood, with souls refreshed, we then give our thanks to God. With heavenly bread he makes the hungry whole, gives living waters to the thirsting soul. Lord of the nations, to all to whom all must bow, in this great feast of love, be with us now, and Jesus Christ is with us now, doing all that he can, giving all that he is to nourish us through this life, and on into the next, bringing us to peace with God a peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now by praying the litany. Please pray with me. 
In peace let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, our Synod President, for Alan, our District President, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the Church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our President, for J.B., our Governor, for Lori, our Mayor, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, pandemic, and need, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Spare your people, O Lord. Preserve us from this and every illness. Give healing and strength to those who are sick. Protect those who care for them, and grant us steady minds and calm hearts in the face of fear. You have borne our infirmities in this human flesh, and purchased us with your own blood. Keep in us in this, keep us in this faith, and embolden us in love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us at the end of the day at the end of our life, at the end of the world. Abide with us with your grace and goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction and temptation comes upon us, the night of fear and despair, the night when death draws near. Abide with us and with all the faithful, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. We pray God's um, peace upon this city as we go throughout this week, and especially at the weekend. I think things are going to die down a little bit this week, but at the weekend we pray that uh, there would be no more flare-ups of violent or looting activity. Uh, now, of course, on the weekend also at Resurrection, there will be peace in our church, for we are returning to our one worship time of 1045 a.m., and uh, you don't have to sign up. Simply, if you want to be in God's house, simply come and simply uh, draw near and take the body of the Lord for yourself. Uh, yeah, again, you don't have to sign up, and it, we're eventually going to th have to think about getting back to normal and about getting back to church, and if this is your time to come back, uh, feel free to come back.
So for now, though, uh, have a great rest of your evening. Enjoy your, enjoy your time with your family, your friends, even if you're gathered online. And know that God goes with you even this day. Have a good night. Bye-bye.